Hey guys, I'm Raquel from MH Family Adventures. Thanks for clicking on this video. If you've been following along on our adventures, you know that I just came off of a Mediterranean cruise, my very first Mediterranean cruise on board MSC Grandiosa um, with my sister celebrating my 40th birthday. So today I'm gonna to share with you some tips, some things that you may need to know if you are in the process of planning a Mediterranean cruise or you're hoping to knock this off your bucket list. So overall, my experience in the Mediterranean was amazing. It was truly a bucket list cruise, I had such a great time. Um, it was a seven night cruise again on board MSC Grandiosa back here in July of 2023. Um, we did visit, we ported out of Barcelona, Spain, and we visited um, different ports there in Italy, as well as Tunisia, which is in the northern part of Africa. And we also visited Marseille, France. So it was an amazing time. Absolutely love the itinerary. But of course, in hindsight, now looking back on things, there were some things that I could have done differently. So I'm gonna share with you my experience and just some tips that might help you with your Mediterranean cruise. The first thing, the cost. So if you are a cruiser, you kind of know you have an average cost for what a Caribbean cruise may cost. I just wanna share with you that the cost of a Mediterranean cruise sometimes exceeds that of a Caribbean cruise. And that's because there are a lot of things that you have to factor into the total cost of your cruise. Now, for my cruise, I did catch a really nice deal and had a solo cabin um, on a messy grandio. So that included drinks and Wi-Fi. So it was perfect for me. Uh, the price was just right. However, when you look at the cost of a Mediterranean cruise compared to a Caribbean cruise, you will see that typically the cost is a little bit higher, but that also does not factor in um, your flights, your lodging, and then all of the excursions because you're going over to the Mediterranean. This is a bucket list cruise. You're probably going to want to go off and explore. Um, it's also recommended that you arrive to your port at least two days in advance in case of flight delays or cancellations or anything like that. So you're gonna have to have lodging and things. So highly recommend that if you're planning a Mediterranean cruise, you definitely factor in the total cost of your cruise prior to booking and book well in advance. That way you have time to pay on things. Um, because like I said, we had the cost of our cruise, we had the cost of our hotel stay, um, transfers to and from the airport. And then of course we did excursions for each port. So definitely look at the total cost of your package before booking your Mediterranean cruise, because you definitely don't want to go over there and break the bank. Um, you plan well in advance, then you can um, make payments on things and make it more palatable as far as trying to get over there to the Mediterranean. All right, so the second thing, something that I absolutely loved about on my Mediterranean cruise was that it was port intensive. And so what I mean by that is that we were on board for seven nights and we only had one port day. So some would say, you know, that's not enough port days. But if you think about like a Caribbean cruise, you're going um, on a cruise for seven nights, you might only have three ports, sometimes four ports. Um, but I love that, you know, we paid all this money to get over there into, Medi into the Mediterranean and we were able to get out and actually explore pretty much every single day. Now with that, keep in mind, you are going out to explore every single day. So it can be a very tiring cruise. So definitely keep that in mind that this is probably not gonna be your typical cruise where you're kicking back, relaxing, enjoying the beach. You're going to be off, you're going to be walking, you're going to be exploring, and you're going to get out there to see those sites. So the cruise vibe is going to be a little bit different, but just anticipate your itinerary being pretty port heavy. And also along the line of having uh, heavy port days or having a lot of port days on your itinerary, a lot of times those port days are very long which makes for a great time because you can actually get out and explore things. So you may actually be in port 10 to 12 hours compared to a Caribbean cruise that might be six to eight hours. So definitely get out there, explore the ports. Absolutely love um, how many ports we were able to explore and the length of time we were in each port. And while I'm speaking about ports, something else to know about a Mediterranean cruise. A lot of the ports over there are industrial, meaning there's not gonna be a whole lot like within walking distance from the port. Now there will be some things depending on the port, but a lot of the ports, especially I think probably four of our ports, we actually had to drive an hour to two hours away to get to some of those uh, popular destinations that you know tourists wanna go visit. So keep that in mind when you're planning your itinerary. If you're a person that you, know, you don't wanna be on a bus for an hour or two hours to get to where you need to be, Definitely consider the ports that you're um, looking at when you're booking your cruise, because pretty much, like I said, four of hours, we had to drive to get to those popular destinations. Now the drives weren't bad. They were scenic for the most part. So it does allow some downtime, um, but just keep in mind, you could be 
in you know a bus for two to four hours out of the day depending on the port accessibility so i like to discuss this um whenever i do cruise because um i love that cruising is accessible for everyone something to keep in mind for a mediterranean cruise where your ship may have accessibility features and different things it may not be available at all the different ports or the destinations that you're trying to get to so you will notice in the Mediterranean that some of the roads and some of the sidewalks might be a bit narrow. Um, it might be made out of cobblestone. So if you are someone or if you're traveling with someone that needs like a wheelchair, scooter, walker, things like that, definitely consider the ports that you're going to visit in the Mediterranean or the excursion that you take. You can plan for and book accessible excursions. But keep in mind, if you're often exploring on your own, there's a chance you may run into a situation where it may not be as accessible as you need. Um, but along with accessibility, um, I did appreciate the fact that like for our tours, they were organized based on language. So we never ran into an issue where there wasn't someone either to translate or we didn't have a device that we could listen into um, for our tour. So think about what your needs may be for your cruise and definitely do some exploring and researching prior to booking your cruise because again some of these ports are not very um user friendly or accessible now the ship now i won't get into too much on msc grandiosa i will do a separate uh vlog um sharing my experience on board msc grandiosa but something to consider with the mediterranean with this being a port intensive um itinerary do not book your cruise based on being on the biggest the nicest ship or most expensive ship. Um, we found that there were parts of the ship we never even visited during our cruise because we were not on the ship much. Um, so definitely don't go over there spending a whole lot of money because it's a popular ship or a ship that you wanna get on unless you plan to just stay on the ship because you will find yourself disappointed that you spent all of this money for this particular ship and you really didn't get a chance to explore. Again, if you have one port day, that's one port day to explore with the thousands of other people that are stuck on the ship. So keep that in mind. Also with the ship, um, some of the activities and things that you might find on a typical Caribbean cruise, um, it may be limited. And this may be just specific to MSC, I'm not sure. I'll have to get on some other Mediterranean cruises on other lines to tell you. Um, but there weren't as many activities as you would find like on a typical Caribbean cruise. It really allowed for some downtime, time for you to get off the ship and explore. So keep that in mind. Um, don't go for the biggest, most expensive ship when you're booking your Mediterranean cruise. You wanna get something that's going to be um, useful for you. Something that, um, like I said, if you plan to get off and explore, you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money um, just because it's the coolest ship out there. All right, the culture. So, this here was something that was more of a culture shock to me. Um, and I went in anticipating um, going into a situation where I am truly a minority um, as far as not being from that area. And so some things to consider um, that we learned along the way. And if you did not catch our full vlog series, be sure to check that out because I did share more details um, there and you can kind of see things in real time as far as some of our experiences that we dealt with on the ship. Now I can tell you overall, just being an American, um, the vibe that I felt on the ship was very, very different than sailing out of the US. Um, now there were some nice people on board, um, the crew, they were amazing. However, there were quite a few times where we had incidents where we felt guests were just flat out rude. We had guests that would jump us in line, like almost literally take your tongs out of your hand to get something from the buffet. I had a lady place her dirty plate on my table as I was eating breakfast. Of course, I had to address that her husband wind up moving the plate from my table. Um, the kids kind of ran just all over the ship. And I know you hear about this in the Caribbean, but it was way worse over there. Um, so it was just a different vibe of people. And I'm not going to necessarily say that's a bad thing, but it was kind of a shock to me when um, I cruise regularly here out of the U.S. It was just very different. So definitely go in with an open mindset of what you may experience with the different cultures. Also along the lines of culture, the different languages. So on our ship, um, they would translate every single thing into at least six different languages. And again, we were the minority. There were only a handful of Americans on board for our sailing. 
And I do think that that might be very specific to MSC being a European based cruise line. I think if you cruise like Royal Caribbean or Norwegian or one of those other lines, there may be more Americans on board, but we were truly a minority. But again, they translate everything in six different languages. Um, I did love that the excursions were planned based on your language, but just know that the culture is different there. Go in with, um, you know, an open mind, uh, be prepared to learn things and be prepared to be patient and just understanding of they don't do the th they don't do things the way we typically do things here. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is very different and it can throw some people off and make for a negative experience. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Also something um, to consider would be to learn a little bit of the language. Um, you may go to different ports and they speak different languages. And I know that's kind of hard to learn different languages, but just some phrases like, hello, good morning. Um, how much is coffee? Um, do you accept um, US dollars or euros or what have you? Learn some basic um, phrases. And I can tell you that I absolutely failed at that um, but it was it was needed so absolutely learn um, some of the language and if you feel like you can't learn the language download an app such as like google translate that can help you if you get into a situation where you need a translator because we did find that happening when we were in port certain areas um, we were unable to find english speakers so um, keep that in mind the culture is very different not bad but you have to go in with an open mind all right pickpockets now this was something that I was not expecting. I kind of heard things about there being a lot of pickpockets over there, but guys, there were. Um, and it was, it really surprised us. They would make announcements on the ship about making sure you kept your items secure. Um, I guess people, they were having things popping up missing. So definitely be sure to protect your valuables. We did have a situation in Barcelona where my sister's phone was actually stolen by a restaurant worker. Um, but thankfully, you know, we went in kind of knowing that in advance. So I'm sharing this with you so you can plan. We carried anti-theft bags um, and we tried to limit what we carried on us as far as valuables. You know, you always try to stash money in different places so you don't have all of your, your money and things in one spot. Um, but de definitely take precautions when you go over there because there were pickpocket signs everywhere. We were even in Marseille, France um, at the cathedral there and they had signs saying there were pickpockets there. So. Um, that was quite surprising. So definitely go over and be sure to protect yourself, be aware of your surroundings and use a buddy system. Do not go off on your own unless you've been there before and you kind of have a feel for the area, but still be careful. Watch for pickpockets. All right, excursions. So there were a ton of excursion options offered through our cruise line. And if you guys follow us, you know that I typically do not book cruise line excursions. I tend to like to um, go off and explore my own or I'll book with third party vendors. I'm going to caution you on doing that in the Mediterranean, especially if it's your first Mediterranean cruise. And I say that because some of our ports, we learned that, um, for instance, going to Sorrento, um, we had to go from Naples to Sorrento and it was about an hour, hour and a half drive, but it's like a one way road. So if you happen to book a third party excursion, Remember, you are not secure as far as if your uh, excursion is delayed getting back to port, the ship will not wait for you. If you book a shore excursion through the ship, the ship will wait for you. If there's a delay or if anything happens, you can get refunded. So keep that in mind. Um, our tour guides at a couple different ports did share that, um, you know, you have to be cautious exploring on your own. One, because of the safety, they drive crazy over there, but also, like I said, if there is a delay, let's say there was an accident on this one way road getting back to the port and you're delayed in your third party excursion, you will get left. So keep that in mind um, when you're planning your excursions. Now, the next time I go over, I may plan some third party excursions. We did a little bit of exploring on our own, but for the most part, if we were leaving the port and having to go an hour to two hours away, it was booked through the ship excursion um, because we felt safe for doing that. And I highly recommend and encourage you to do that so that you don't get left over there in Europe. All right, and a question that I've, I've been asked several times since I've returned from my trip is do I feel um, the Mediterranean or European cruise is appropriate for families? Now, you guys know we are a cruise vlogging family. Um, for this trip, it was just a girl's trip, so the kids did not go. Um, so if you are thinking about planning a trip overseas abroad for your family, I definitely say go for it, but definitely be mindful of the ports that you're visiting 
Um, if your kids cruise or travel and they're used to like beach stops, that may not be the case in the Mediterranean. Um, they're gonna get more of those scenic views, um, a lot of history. So if your kids love history and, and you know wanna learn while on vacation, then I definitely say go for it, but definitely be mindful of the ports that you're visiting if you plan to take your family. Also something to consider with cruising with the family in the Mediterranean. Um, if you are going over and you're gonna be a minority, um, the language barriers. So like our kids personally love going to the kids clubs and teens clubs, but it could be hard to engage if, you know, they're the only English speaker or there's only a couple English speakers. So, you know, teach your kids about those culture, cultural differences. It doesn't mean they can't connect, um, but just be mindful of that because it will look a lot different than the Caribbean. All right, and those are just a few tips um, to help you with your Mediterranean cruise if you're planning a Mediterranean cruise. If you're looking to book a Mediterranean cruise, we do own our own travel agency, Major Adventures Travel Agency. Definitely feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description box. I love to help you plan your, um, your first Mediterranean cruise or your next Mediterranean cruise if you've already been there. But if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to drop those in the comments. If you have any questions specifically about the Mediterranean and cruising or cruising with families, um, I'd love to be able to answer those for you. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to planning my next Mediterranean cruise. And um, thanks for following along on this adventure. If you are not currently subscribed or you're new to our channel, welcome and please consider subscribing. Um, but we have some more adventures headed your way. So I'll see you guys next time.